Hey everybody, this is Pastor David Newell. Trust you're having an awesome week. We are. Um, and uh, I just, uh, I have a good word for you today. I'm going to talk about entering God's rest, what that means. I don't think we can hear too many messages that deal with this. Because we all slip back from time to time. We get into our own strength, that kind of thing. And the Lord wants us to not only enter His rest, but stay in His rest. And we're going to talk about what that means. But Sunday, I'm going to have a really tremendous word. I'm going to deal with uh, bringing the kingdom of God to our generation. And, you know, there are, the Lord showed me there are seven lies that the enemy has foisted on our culture. Seven lies. And really, anywhere you go, those lies are prevalent. And God has called us as light. And so as light, we need to dispel the lie. And we need to demonstrate the kingdom of God. Uh, Ina and I and another individual had an opportunity to really demonstrate this uh, earlier in the week. And we saw a person who was just desperate uh, receive a word from the Lord that has just made a tremendous difference. I'm going to share that with you on Sunday. It's not a church person. It was somebody out there in our culture that uh, was struggling. And this is what it's all about, folks. You know, there's no joy like being able to minister to people in that in that capacity. But um, I want to talk to you today about entering his rest. And I'm going to be ministering from the book of Hebrews. I make some applications, and I'm reading from the Amplified. I want to read in Hebrews chapter 4, first of all, in verse 3. The Bible says, For we who have believed, past tense, we who have believed, adhered to, trusted in, and relied on God to enter that rest uh, in accordance with his declaration that those who did not believe should not enter when he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And he said this, although his works had been completed and prepared, and waiting for all who would believe from the foundation of the world. Boy, that's powerful. Do you know that everything that we need for life and godliness has already been provided for us? You say, where is that in the Bible? Well, it's in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Uh, that means that whatever we need, it's already been provided. We need to believe it. But here's here's the thing. We, we need to watch out for reason. Reason can get us in trouble. Uh, I want to read this moving on in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 7 from the Amplified. Again he sets a definite day today. Say that with me. Today. That means right now. Uh, and gives another opportunity of securing that rest. Saying through David after so long a time in the words already quoted today if you would hear his voice, and when you hear it, do not harden your hearts. Over in Mark's of chapter 8, verse 17, Jesus rebuked the disciples for hardness of heart. He had already performed an incredible miracle of feeding the 5,000 plus, that's 5,000 men. It was maybe up to 10 or 12,000 when you consider women and children or more. And they were debating over you know, we didn't bring bread. And he's not talking about bread. He was talking about the leaven of the Pharisees, a legalistic spirit. And he said, why are you reasoning in your heart? And why do you harden your hearts? The first thing is we need to ask the Holy Spirit for a revelation of how he wants to solve a problem. One of the things I've always done for years, when I don't know what to do, I will go back and ask the Holy Spirit for a rhema word. That means a quickened word from the scripture. And then once I get it, I want to hang on to it and, and believe God until it manifests. All right. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they have a bad report. Many years ago, I had received a bad report concerning my throat. They said, um, if, you do, if you do not do anything, you will never speak again. Well, that was like, you know, have an arrow of fear preacher, you know, because that's how I, that was my calling, was to speak and preach and teach. And so I said, no, I'm going to go and I'm going to worship God until I can get in peace. Because see, 
we don't we can't really properly hear from God if we're in unrest if we're all uptight and we I had to go back and seek the Lord and worship God till I felt his peace then I inquired of him he gave me a scripture and I stood on that scripture and the healing of God is a result the healing of God um, flowed to me it's been many years and I've walked in that healing uh, some more scriptures here in Hebrews 4. So then there is still awaiting a full and complete Sabbath rest reserved for the true people of God. We're talking about a rest from fear, a rest from frustration, uh, a rest from worry. We're not talking about a day. Jesus is our Sabbath. Okay, That's why we have to cast all our cares upon him, for he cares for us. And then in verse 10, For he who has once entered God's rest, has ceased from his weariness and pain of human labors, just as God rested from the labors peculiar his own, peculiar his own. So we tr quit trying to figure it out with our reason. We say, okay, I got a bad report. What do I do? You worship the Lord and you get into God, and then he and you and, and you worship him until the peace comes. And when the peace comes, then you can hear from God. I had a word many years ago. I was uh, driving from um, Princeton, where I was going to school, to Philadelphia Inner City Church, where I went to church. And uh, I was just singing in the Spirit, worshiping the Lord. And all of a sudden, just like this, the Holy Spirit gave me a word from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 12. And it was where uh, Elijah had run from Jezebel. He'd had great victories the day before, but uh, he he had the next day he woke up it was a different day uh, Jezebel had threatened to take his life he ran uh, the, the Lord met him on a mountain more or less said what are you doing here Elijah Elijah spoke to the Lord I'm the only one you got left he said no you're not I've got 7,000 that haven't bowed their knee to Baal but here's the interesting point as Elijah stood on the mountain the Bible says there was a great earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. And then there was a fire, but God was not in the fire. Then there was a great wind, but God was not in the wind. And then a still, small voice. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, if you, when you get a bad report or you're up against it, if you will worship me until my presence and peace fills your heart, then you'll hear my still small voice, but you can't hear it <clears throat> if you allow the winds, the earthquakes, and the fire, the emotional up, uproar of the day <clears throat> to dominate. Well, that was in my car as I drove to Philadelphia that night. I got into the meeting, and we were worshiping the Lord, and when the worship time was over, a prophet came walking down from the platform. He went right up to me. And he quoted 1 Kings 19.12 and gave me the exact same word. He said, if you, will, if you will allow the earthquakes, the fire, and the wind of the day, if you will cast it aside and get into the presence of the Lord, you will hear a still small voice all your days. You'll be able to walk in the answers that the Lord will give you. So that's my word to you today. It's time to enter his rest. And it's time to walk in victory. <clears throat> no matter what you're facing, God has an answer for it. He knows the way out, and he is the way. So, Father, we thank you today for a clear word to your people, bringing them health, prosperity, and blessing in Jesus' name. God bless you.